Senator for Utah. Mr. President, as President Pro Tempore of the United States Senate, I ask my colleagues to join me in marking a special day. Exactly 70 years ago today, the State of Israel was established. On the same day, the United States was the first country to recognize Israel's statehood. I applaud President Trump's decision to commemorate this historic anniversary with the opening of the United States Embassy in Jerusalem. In the 70 years since its founding, Israel has shared an unbreakable bond with the United States. I am pleased to be a friend of Israel and have played an integral role in strengthening relations between our two countries. It is difficult for me to express the profound reverence I have for the Jewish people. As a symbol of my respect, I wear a mezuzah around my neck. I have done so every day for the past almost four decades. I think actually more than four decades. The mezuzah reminds me of the affinity that I, as a member of the Mormon faith, hold for the Jewish people in their history. Both Israel and Utah were settled by religious minorities seeking refuge from persecution. A shared history that deepens our devotion to democracy and our love of freedom. Although my schedule does not allow me to be in Israel today, perhaps it is even more appropriate that I make these remarks here rather than in Jerusalem, where I would like to be. After all, today should be seen as an American holiday, just as it is an Israeli one. America's interests, pros prosperity, and security have benefited immeasurably from our deep friendship with the State of Israel. Indeed, the world is a much better place because of Israel, and it's high time that the country receive its fair treatment on the world stage. That's why last week I joined Senator Booker in introducing legislation that calls for the fair treatment of Israel, urging other nations to foster diplomatic ties with the country and recognize its sovereignty. Israel desperately needs allies. Indeed, the events of last week are a stark reminder that Israel has many enemies who seek its destruction. The Iranian government directed missile strikes into the Golan Heights in the early hours of the morning last Thursday, just hours before the Iranian government announced that it may explore enriching uranium towards acquiring nuclear weapons. I know the Golan Heights. I've been there. I've looked over the Golan Heights. Mr. President, we stand at a historic crosswords. Whatever your ideas about the Iran deal, whether you were for it or against it, we should remember that the goals and ideals or ideas of the Iranian government have not changed. They are as they have been for the last several decades, aimed at the destruction of Israel. Our Israeli friends need our help. And so my message today is to the American people, to their representatives in both chambers of Congress, and to all the nations of the world, now is not the time for partisanship or political games. Now is the time for meaningful and unified action in defense of the Jewish people and the state of Israel. That means a number of things. It starts with all of us getting behind this president and his new approach to Iran. We can have our disagreements on his policies and other areas, but taking an aggressive, holistic posture on Iran should be a bipartisan issue. We must be willing to confront Iran on its nuclear program, as well as its bases in Syria, its support for terrorism, and its numerous violations of human rights and religious freedom. Here in Congress, we should support the administration's position through legislation. And to that end, I invite my colleagues to join me on a number of initiatives I've championed in this Congress, including the continued support for the Iranian People Act, which holds the Iranian regime responsible for its human rights abuses. I also call on my friends to join me in supporting the Iranian Transparency Act, which exposes the hypocrisy of the Iranian government in frequent, or in funding, excuse me, in funding violent causes. 
rather than providing for the welfare of its people. These actions are just the beginning. We now have an opportunity to hold the Iranian government accountable. We should start with curbing Iran's nuclear ambitions. We would do well to remember that Iran's nuclear program is not an end in, in itself, but just one of many tools the government has at its disposal for causing great harm. <clears throat> in that light, we need to appeal to our partners in Europe and in the Middle East to not only settle on talking points, but on plans of action. If indeed we share the priority of protecting democratic values and institutions, we're just being, we must, we must uh, be, uh, <clears throat> do so by protecting Israel, a beacon of democracy in the Middle East. We need to both talk the talk and walk the walk. Mr. President, the world is a different place from what it was in 1948, and so is Israel. Today, Israel is on the cutting edge of every innovation that helps the human condition. From medicine to technology to irrigation, as testament to Israel's strength, it has nurtured partnerships across the Middle East, Africa, and Asia. The United States must continue doing its part to foster these partnerships. Just as importantly, we must continue leading the charge in ideas and actions that can help bring about a secure Israel. The task has never been more urgent. I call on my colleagues in the Senate to come together on this to build a future of peace and prosperity for Israel and its neighbors. Let Israel's funding, founding be a holiday for us and indeed for all nations of the world. And let us pray that we can soon celebrate this anniversary in more peaceful times. Mr. President, uh, 